Tim Rymel graduated from college with a degree in business. And we'll get back to that a little bit later. But today, he is a former evangelical pastor and former conversion counselor who came out of the closet for himself in 2008. And since then, he has written several books. Like everything I learned about management, I learned from having a kindergartner in 2012. Mm. Going Gay in 2014 and Rethinking Everything in 2018. That must have been a treat. But he is also a regular columnist for the Huffington Post. And on August 31st, 2017, updated on September 1st, 2017, Tim published an article titled Evangelicals Reaffirm Their LGBT Ignorance and Bigotry, where he wrote, in case you missed it in 1946, when the word homosexuality first, not even in quotes, when the word homosexuality first entered the Bible, or began in 1980 when the first recorded sermon against gay people was delivered, or nearly every weekly sermon somewhere since evangelical Christians released the Nashville statement to reaffirm their disdain for LGBT people. At this point, he continues, it seems redundant, if not just mean-spirited, to keep reiterating, ooh, nice word, in the thinnest of veiled messages that LGBT people are sinners unloved by God and destined for hell. We get it, we've always gotten it, but I don't believe we are the ones evangelicals are trying to convince. If someone was to describe the news coverage against persons opposed to the rushed vaccines or the facial coverings that the NIOSH had actually definitively determined a decade ago were ineffective, as mean-spirited to keep reiterating that persons who don't get vaccinated are going to die or say we get it already, they'd probably be banned from social media. But that was back in 2017 when we were being told by Hillary Clinton still that the Bible teaches us to love. When there was a big push for Black Lives Matter, removing the names of persons associated with the Confederacy from public school facilities. And as some may recall, some were still trying to recover from losing a presidential election as they were so confident their superior education would win. And around this time, the Huffington Post had also published a story about members of Planned Parenthood convening in the Center City Philadelphia Hotel to talk about the resistance with an interesting vignette about some Planned Parenthood activists attending one of the luncheons who burst into giggling, giggling, when one of the persons at their table had asked as to whether they should pause to say grace. That story, for whatever reason, was deleted from the Huffington Post after a certain notorious political figure, no names, who has existed on the periphery of the Northern Virginia politics scene for almost a decade, according to some local news reports that have a problem counting, at least decided to challenge that story. And it might be of some empirical value to note that that disappearance of stories has continued to occur in several stories in prominent publications, including the New York Times, which may be in the league of Blue Virginia for some, and believe it or not, he has actually had the power to make some of the elevated discourse in those publications disappear. But for former evangelical pastor Tim Rynell, according to his biography at the Huffington Post, his dad, oh, isn't that nice? He's an educator, oh my, and an author of those 
books on being gay and what he learned from a five-year-old we noted before. And he holds a master of education from Colorado State University, CSU, which is actually ranked 150th among national universities, a total of 388, which puts his college in the top 39% category. Mm. Impressive. And personally, as a graduate of a college ranked ninth amongst national colleges, liberal arts colleges and universities, I was a little curious about where former evangelical pastor Tim Rylell had earned his baccalaureate degree before commencing a career in what he described as business director of outreach for love in action in Memphis, director of development for YFC in Memphis, manager slash trainer, ooh, moving on up, for Diversified Capital Corporation of Tennessee, where according to his biography on LinkedIn, he actually got the chance to finally manage 20 people in three departments. Ooh, seven in each department, imagine that. But would I, what would I do? Because when I graduated from college, I just jumped into a management job at a major New York City commercial bank. Hardly business. But he continued on in what he called business, departing Nashville to head out to the great Pacific Northwest to begin a position as a trainer at Washington Mutual. A trainer at Washington Mutual, and then a training director at Summit Funding Incorporated in Sacramento. But anyone who has ever been in business or even worked at a law firm would describe someone in training as not exactly in business per se, as much as one of the support staff. But then, just before he came out of the closet, a former evangelical pastor, Tim Rymel, became the president, ooh, I'll make myself president, and CEO of CK Corporate Education Consulting, ooh, long title, where he says today he has worked with, with, with Fortune 500 companies, even though he has not worked at, at, Fortune 500 companies, which brings us back to where he actually attended college and why Huffington Post, for whatever reason, does not mention it on his biography. Mm, CSU, so we see. Let's try it this way. If you were a reader of the Huffington Post, a loyal reader of the Huffington Post, and had run into Tim Rynell before he got woke, and before he got a column at the Huffington Post in his job as an evangelical pastor trying to convert people from homosexuality with religion, would you have guessed that he had obtained his bachelor's degree from Harvard? Stop. How about Oxford or the Zabon? No, right? Well, and we have to assume that the author, Tim Rynell, and former evangelical minister is being completely honest on his LinkedIn biographical account because it says that he received his <laughs> associate's degree in liberal arts and sciences, general studies and humanities. You never even find that in a baccalaureate institution. Liberal arts, <laughs> well, what in the world? The General Studies and Human Humanities at American River College, ARC. Go for the ARC. And then continued on at the Online University of Phoenix to obtain his BS in business management before beginning his 25 year business career. It now finds him working with. Fortune 500 companies just are moving on up now that he's come out of the closet. But our graduate of uh, University of Phoenix with a master's of education from CSU who calls working in 
training as business experience has a lot about which to enlighten us uneducated folks who attended far better schools and worked at far better places, including actually working at Fortune 500 companies, not just working with them. That is kind of like those units that used to come out to train with us when I was assigned to the Ranger Regiment. We're with the Rangers, you know, very, very different. So to help you get through this, just try to remember that Tim Rinell as a former evangelical pastor, and it shouldn't be too difficult to see why this doesn't quite sound like something we might read at Yale. Quote, evangelicals, he writes, Evangelicals like to believe Christians are on the forefront of social change. But the historical reality is that they tend to lag decades or centuries behind when it comes to science. Racial equality, oh, so we should take this very, very well from me. Racial equality, women's equality, and of course, LGBT acceptance. Most tend to hold a literal and stagnant interpretation of the Bible. Is it, uh, is, is it possible to have a stagnant interpretation of science? For one reason or another, gravity has not changed in thousands of years. Millions of years, gravity is still with us. When is it going to go away? Integrating scientific updates and progressive social norms becomes difficult, a difficult task when you believe God has already made up his mind in one final declaration on any single issue. Amazing, amazing. Nothing should be permanent and absolute, according to Reverend Tim. One day we'll go off to the oceans and the water will have disappeared because nothing should be permanent. But Tim adds a quote from author and activist Kathy Baldock, quote, the initial signings of the Nashville Statement contain no surprises. Their echo chamber demands that they refrain from intellectually engaging what is known about human sexuality and gender from science, biology, and psychology. Likewise, their exclusionary theology demands they ignore anthropology, archaeology, and other earth sciences. She continues, Christians, it seems are forced to choose between two alternatives, kind of like Hegelian delecticism. Either choose faith and literal reading of the Bible in intellectual exile, or be intellectually curious and honest and abandon your faith. So in this series, we are going to review the 14 articles of the National Statement and the preamble that are not presented in author, dad, and educator Tim Rynell's critique that was published in the Huffington if only to examine exactly what is ignored in anthropology, archaeology, and other earth sciences, as well as what is known about human sexuality and gender in science, biology, and psychology, as someone with an experience in training should have told us in his article. This briefing is unclassified, as you were. My name is Major Mike Webb, and by God, I am running for Arlington Public School Board. Let's keep Mike Webb away from our schools. Honest. Carry on. This advertisement was authorized by Mike Webb.